Hi, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with best-selling author Dan Pink. So you find that most people are not attracted to selling. I mean, it's kind of a turnoff. Most people are repelled, yeah. <laughs> not even not attracted. They're outwardly repelled by this. They, they think of sales as slimy and cheesy and sleazy. Yeah, it's in the category total, of... Total lowbrow. I mean, they, they, they have images in their heads of guys in bad sport coats selling crappy used cars. Yeah. Uh, Herb Tarlek from WKRP. Yeah. It's, um, it, it, sales has a terrible, terrible connotation. And, and why does it have such a stigma, you think? Well, I think that's an interesting question, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to get at here. I think that that view of sales, the view that it's about the low road and duplicity and hoodwinkery, is very outdated. That view of sale tells us, to my mind, much more about the conditions in which sales have taken place rather than about sales itself. And what I mean by that is this. Most of what we know about sales is for a world of information asymmetry, where the seller always had more information than the buyer. When the seller has more information than the buyer, the seller can rip you off. It's not even close. So, I mean, gr the best example are, are, are cars. 20 years ago, you go in to buy a Nissan. The Nissan dealer is going to know a lot more about cars than you will, period. He's certainly going to know a lot more about Nissans than you. Right. Now, not so much. And so, this, so we have this connotation of that sales is sleazy and lowbrow and low rent because of information asymmetry. But when information asymmetry disappears, we have to rethink what we think of sales. And right. what, what, what this world of information parity or close to it has done is moved us from a world where from buyer beware to a world of seller beware. Now the sellers have to be on notice because the buyers suddenly have a lot more power. Buyers used to have few choices, not much information, and no way to talk back. Right. Now they've got lots of choices, lots of information, and lots of ways to talk back. So let's unpack that just a little bit because yep. that's good stuff. Um, so how did we get there in the first place? You say uh, it, it's not an equal playing ground. Right. I get that. And the internet has probably changed everything. Huge, yeah. Right, where we go and do our research online and right. we figure out and do cost comparisons with a click right. of a button and all kinds of calculators out there. Resources are there for sure. But isn't it a lot perpetuated by the people themselves? In what way? So there's this turnoff, right, of the, I can think of the door-to-door -door sales. Oh, yeah. Style oh, I see what that. you're saying. Yeah. yeah. But because here's the thing, because that doesn't work anymore. Yeah. I mean, I mean, all of these kinds of, that you're talking about, all these kinds of conventions of the classic form of sales are ineffective now. You think about something like the advice, ABC, always be closing, this yeah. kind of steamroller driving to get people to sign on a line that is dotted. Yeah. That doesn't work when consumers have lots of choices, when they can talk back and tell everyone you're a sleazebag. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not, it, 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 and, what, and this is actually central to the whole book, which is that this world of seller beware is a, a v different in kind, not different in degree, different in kind from a world of buyer beware. It calls on a fundamentally different suite of abilities.